All right, here's the second video for our trig class. In this video, we're gonna get into the main topic of this section, where we actually get to see some circles. We left the last video with this distance formula, and ideally, the ability to understand why the distance between, say, these two points is exactly five. What I wanna do now is make the maybe obvious observation that this blue dot isn't the only dot that's exactly five away from the pink dot. And if we took a look at all of the dots that were exactly five away from the pink dot, they'd form a circle. More specifically, a circle centered at the pink dot with a radius of five. Put differently, if you set up our distance equation with a five in place of the distance, the coordinates of the pink dot as one of the points, and just x and y as the coordinates of the blue dot, all of the different x, y pairs that'll satisfy this equation will fall on this circle. What I'm saying is just like this is the equation of a line with a y-intercept of three and a slope of negative one-half, this is the equation of a circle centered at 6, 2 with a radius of 5. Okay, maybe this is a good time to be honest with you. Well, I haven't actually lied to you, I should let you know that nobody writes the equation of the circle this way. I guess people don't like radicals or something, so to get rid of the square root sign, they always square both sides of the equation. But fine, whatever, these two equations are equivalent. Any pair that solves one of them will solve the other one. So while you can use whichever one you want, we might as well be like everyone else in the world and use the second one. We'll refer to this as the standard form of the equation of a circle. And since we don't want to just be able to talk about circles centered at 6, 2 with radius 5, maybe we'll use h and k respectively as the x and y coordinates of the center of the circle and r to represent the radius. Now we have something general enough to use in whatever application we want. The y equals mx plus b of circles, if you will. And maybe you're like, whoa, so many letters, I'm never going to remember where everything goes. Or worse yet, maybe your book lists the x minus h term first and the y minus k term second. This is way harder than y equals mx plus b. Nah, it's really not. You're going to have two sets of parentheses. Inside one of those sets of parentheses will be a y and another number. That other number will be the one relevant to the y coordinate of the center. Inside the other set of parentheses will be an x in some number. And you guessed it. That number right next to the x will be the one that's relevant to the x coordinate of the center. And over on the other side of the equation is where we're going to throw the square of the radius. So finally, after all that preamble, I can give you an example which, if you can solve, which I bet you can, you'll have learned everything I want you to learn for this section. I want to be able to draw you an arbitrary circle. Arbitrary meaning I can put the center wherever I want with whatever radius I choose. And what I want you to be able to do is tell me the equation of that circle. Easy enough? This circle appears to be centered at 3, negative 4, and the radius is 6. So all we got to do is put 3s, negative 4s, and 6s in their appropriate spot in our standard form of the equation of the circle. That's it. A couple things to watch out for. Notice that the x-coordinate of the circle is at positive 3, and the y-coordinate is at negative 4. However, when we look at the standard form of the equation of the circle, we have x minus 3 and y plus 4. That's weird. No, it's not weird. It's because we have those negative signs in the general form, which if you really want to trace things back, came from the negative signs in our distance equation. Negative because the way we found distance in one dimension was just to subtract. Remember the dots at two and six that were four apart because six minus two is four? Anyways, because of the subtraction in our distance equation, the standard form of the equation of the circle has subtraction, so we're gonna be subtracting the x and y coordinates of the center which will have the effect of switching the signs on those two points respectively. The other thing to watch out for is just make sure you square your radius. It's so easy to be super careful with the signs on everything and get everything in the right place and totally understand what you're doing, but leave a six on the right side of the equation instead of six squared or 36. In my experiences, those are the two major pitfalls that students run into, and as long as you can avoid those, you're probably in pretty good shape. That's everything for this video.